Welcome to the Ink Pulp Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Crystal. Welcome back to another um, journey into the stack machine, this amazing project that I worked with artists who inspire me, artists who I love, and we all fed off each other and we just created this. There's no record company involved. There's no producer outside of us involved. There's no corporation involved. There's no giant entity behind this. This is four artists creating something they believe in, creating something they love, and putting it out. So please support Stack Machine in any way you can. I'm telling you, as a fan of hip hop, this track bangs. You've got Mike Realm, who's created a beat that when I first heard it, I just started laughing. It was so good. And then when I heard Brown come in on it, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. And then as we were working, Dell joins. And I'm working with Dell as, as he's recording, and then I hear his verse. <laughs> This is the real shit. This is the dream. This is making shit happen. Making shit up out of nowhere where shit didn't exist before. It's brand new. We did this. And we're, we did it with faith that it would succeed. And I'm telling you, this thing is dope. And there's a lot more to come after this. This is just the beginning. So today I'm going to be inking DJ Mike Realm and talking more about the project. This is not DJ Mike Realm himself, but DJ Mike Realm, the character in the world of the stack machine. Enjoy. Peace. All right, welcome back to the Ink Pulp Podcast. We are tackling the stack machine. That was a hand spasm. What the hell was that? <laughs> um, oh, I had a, a loose hair in my brush. It was giving me some, some source. So last week we covered Brown uh, and told some origin of the stack machine. Brown's design, he, he was very into some anime ideas. He definitely wanted a mask. And this is pre-COVID, mind you. Pre-COVID. Uh, COVID hit shortly after we started the project which was actually a blessing for the project i mean covid sucks and it fucked up a lot of shit and a lot of people died and it's awful but for this project um it caused everything to stop and we had nothing else to do and, and we we just hopped on zoom every few days and uh i would sketch and we'd talk about designs and talk about projects and we'd talk and we got to know each other and it allowed us that was a doom piece i did i don't know why i'm holding that up for the camera <laughs> i'm just letting some ink dry um it allowed us to develop a friendship during a very difficult time covid i mean we were all trapped inside um i was coming into my studio still and that's because uh no one else was in this building and it's a short little mile drive from my house so it got me out of the house gave me stuff to do um, but talking to them all was, was really, really beneficial and helpful. And we became friends through this process. So Brown really wanted some of these anime and manga influences tied into him. And, and I had the vision of almost like a, a Mad Max future for his character. Um, whereas Mike's character, Mike, DJ Mike Realm performs in a black suit with red sneakers all black white all black and white with red sneakers so he he didn't want to add too much to that he knew he wanted a really nice like gundam style mech helmet well that gave me something to work with and off we went to the designing realms i designed a bunch of helmets and ultimately you know you, you might be able to see it at the end of the video but um the the face piece is a giant letter m which i was really proud of because mike 
And then we came up with the logo on his belt buckle right there, MR for Mike Realm. So it echoes the, the design in the helmet. But Mike, like I said in the last episode, the first thing I heard on the, the Stack Machine track was Mike's beat. And that shook me in the best way possible. I was just... I remember Dr. Dre saying once in an interview, you know a beat is good when it makes you make that ugly face. And I knew exactly what he was saying then. And when I heard this beat, ooh, I made an ugly face. Just like, ooh, that shit is nasty. It was great. And anyone who ever loved The Far Side is going to freak the fuck out when they hear this track because it is so visionary creative it's everything you think about when you think about the far side but it was dark and like i said before that was new for me and mike's beat was epic in scale i mean it felt like like the beat you'd hear at the end of the the avengers movie when they're all fighting thanos it was that epic of a sounding beat and so as we were designing and working on stuff and talking all the time, we started to realize this project is much bigger than what we started it as. Like I said, and I, I just mentioned the Avengers movie and the epic quality of the beat, we started realizing this is like a hip hop project that could go on for a long time. And we could get more and more guest rappers to come in we could design characters for them and we could grow this project into something unique and different. So now it was already in discussion that this was becoming more than the far side. This was something new. And Brown kept having this vision and saying, I see us creating what is like the Justice League or the Avengers of hip hop. So we needed to bring in another rapper and Brown went to work on that and I'm not going to say who or what yet but that will be soon on another episode and who he got rocked my world but back to this so the project we started to realize this is something huge this is not just a record cover as was originally intended this is now something bigger so our, our zoom calls became filled with ideas and dreams of what this could be. Everything from t-shirts and stickers to enamel pins to vinyl toys to video games to animated series, what, uh, whatever we could think of, we started envisioning this as that. And if you remember from the last podcast, if you put your mind to it, you can manifest some serious shit. And that's how this project came to be for me as I put my mind to it. So here I am nerding out that I'm working with Mike Realm and Booty Brown. And they start to tell me their origin story of reaching out to me. And I remember Brown, Mike saying, Brown said to me, do you think we could get Sean Crystal? Like I was the get. I mean, it's like you're the far side and you're Mike Realm. I'm the get. That that was new for me and that felt awesome. But it put me on a level with them where there was just a mutual respect. There is a mutual respect, a creative respect. We have never had any problems working together. It's been nothing but incredible. We're all open to each other's ideas and... Uh, together we've come up with some great stuff and and even like with brown he's had great ideas for what i should draw so at this point in the project we're like all right well let's let's get a cover of you two in the stack machine and let's get these designs done let's get a cover mock-up going and we'll have that to to jump from and we can start, Brown started reaching out to, to other rappers to see who he could get on board, see who was interested. And um, Mike was remixing, and I don't know what the technical terms are, <laughs> making it sound better. Because what they had sent me, Mike said, was like a rough cut. 
It sounded amazing to me, but I, I, I don't know the technical stuff. As I'm recording this, we're figuring out the release of it because now a lot of the, the work is done. I mean, there's more, as we get more guest rappers in the future, we'll, we'll do more and more, of course. But right now we're, we're getting our primary uh, drawings and assets in order. And that's why I'm starting to release these. These are coming out in, in June, July-ish, and that's when we're talking about starting to um, let the first track out, the single. Uh, so we're figuring it all out. But um, one thing we did was we were, I mean, we were talking about everything from like shoe sponsorship. So I remember Mike was like, I wear Puma, red Puma suede. So let's make sure I have, so I drew these red Pumas with these fat laces and um, we figured we could put that Mike Realm logo on the sneaker. That's the only time you see me use a pen right there. It's all brush. It's all magic. It's all brush. So that's kind of how, how these two designs came together. And that's how the stack machine started. And, and it's getting really crazy. And this is during COVID. It's really giving me a reason to be excited and, and something to do. We have no idea how we we're going to make money off this thing, but it did not matter. We, we believed in this, and that is something new. A project where I wasn't getting paid, a project where I was creatively invested in myself, and a project I believe in wholeheartedly. Thank you all for listening. I'll see you next week when we got more Stack Machine coming. This is... The Ink Pulp Podcast. This is the Ink Pulp Podcast. Comics. Hip hop. Life. 